you cannot complain today. Emirates Cup 22, 6 0. Absolute demolition. Arsenal looking brilliant yet again. And yes, just like the last one I did, if you watch my uh, review after the Chelsea game, yes, it's just a friendly. But when you're doing just a friendly, would you rather play like that or would you rather struggle through and not be fluent and not play good football and not see commitment and not see sharpness? I'm excited. That was good. That's what I want to see in a friendly. A friendlies are all about me seeing some good football, seeing commitment from the team, showing me that they're ready for that first game of the season. I've seen that this year. I'm happy. I'm excited. We've got... You know, maybe we've got a transfer or two left to go, but we've done the bulk of our transfer business before the start of the season. This is what I've been asking for for years, for years and years. Even when you look at the games, the ticket sales for this season, they're selling out. That wasn't the case last year. People are excited. I am excited. I'm excited about this season. How can you not be excited when you see Saka, Martinelli and Jesus doing what they were doing? How good did they look? They were brilliant today. So, I mean, Sevilla, look, they put up no opposition. We were 4-0 up in a flash. I get it. I get it. It's, it's nothing to read into. Just because we won 6-0 today doesn't, even think, doesn't mean that I think we're going to go and batter Palace 3-0. All it tells me is that we're doing what we need to do. And, and we look good for it, man. So I am excited. I can't lie. I'm really looking forward to this season. Clearly, look, Sevilla didn't come up to do much today. They weren't at the races. Arsenal were sharper in mind, sharper in body, more physical. They wanted it more. In every department, we were superior. But the fact of the matter is, you know, it is just a friendly. Yeah, I saw so much commitment from the team there. Jesus was quicker than anyone and everyone in terms of getting on to loose balls. Martinelli, Saka, likewise, the work they did, Partey and Xhaka, and I'll talk about Partey later actually, but you know, I, God, you know what? it doesn't even feel right to be speaking his name right now. So actually, I'm not going to make the point I was going to make about him. And I'll just talk about him later. Um, Saliba, good as usual. Gabriel as well. You know, let me just share one thing that I noticed in this game that not many people in the stadium would have noticed, right? 62nd minute of the game. Zinchenko has a ball on the left-hand side. He plays a cutback across to Martin Erdegaard. Erdegaard connects with his left foot. The ball goes over the bar. And then Zinchenko's reaction really, really uh, confused me because he's played quite well in that passage of play and he's created a good chance with probably a high uh, goals expectancy. And what he's done as soon as he's seen Erdegaard hit it over the bar was he's done this. He's hit his head like six, seven times. And I thought to myself, is he frustrated that Erdegaard didn't finish the chance? Because I just thought it's a bit of an overreaction. It's probably like a bit unnecessary when you're many, many goals up. It's a friendly... And, you know, fair enough, a, a teammate has not scored a chance that you put on, but it's not really how, you're, how you should react to teammates. Um, and basically, what I saw him do after that, I absolutely loved. And it just shows the standards. Okay, sure. It just shows the standards. Like, honestly, jobs worse, man. Anyway, it just shows the standards of uh, these X-Man City players, I have to say. And I hope we get to those levels. Because he was so annoyed that when he played that pass, it wasn't perfectly on the ground. After hitting his head a few times, he motioned that it didn't roll, it sort of bounced. And I just love that attention to detail, that absolute, that desire for perfection. Right, and he was beating himself up. Just had this person being very rude, getting in my personal space, being very sarcastic, putting his badge right up in my face. I just want to take a picture of your badge. Can you please put your badge in front of the camera so I can make a complaint? Or go and get me your boss. One of the two. Your boss or your badge, which one's it going to be? Which one's it going to be? As soon as you give me one of the two, just give me your answer and I'll comply fully. I just want your boss or your badge so I can deal with the way you've treated me. I'll give you my name. No, I want your badge. No, I'm not, I don't want no pictures. Stop, stop, stop fucking videoing me, mate. Stop. Why are you swearing? You're meant to be working and you're swearing you're losing your call. Anyway, so rudely interrupted by some very arrogant stewards and um, yeah, I've got the picture that I wanted. Here he is. Why are you pushing past me? You realise you realize it's all being recorded. What's wrong with you? What is wrong with you? Like, you're working and you're desperate for a fight or something. Anyway, so this is going to be an interesting post-match reaction with all of that clowning from that job's worth. But anyway, let me get back on track onto what I did want to do before I end up having to speak to a supervisor. But... Um, what I was saying before about Zinchenko, 
So he's played a good pass there, but he's not happy because it's not absolutely perfect. And it's these levels that Arsenal are going to need to get to if we seriously, seriously want to move on to the next level. And I, I just love to see, I love to see that reaction. And also, when that from that split second, I thought, is he sort of like getting annoyed at Erdegaard? And I realised it was that himself. I've got so much respect for that. Anyway. Um, Overall as well, Saliba, Gabriel, brilliant. Ramsdale distribution is absolutely back on point. And for me, it was a special one today as well because it was the first time I brought my son, who's only 17 months old, to the ground. And with one 6 nil, he's clearly a very, very good luck charm. And uh, yeah, it was obviously really, really nice to have him here. And um, just buzzing, just a lovely day, man. So for me now it's all about that palace game and um, it would just be such an arsenal thing to do for us to beat chelsea 4-0 beat seville 4-0 sorry 6-0 and then go and lose to palace or do something crazy i'm really really hoping that we take this pre-season form and and don't sort of like make a mockery of it because if we do go and lose to palace and you know what happened against brentford last year if something like that happens we are going to be taking pelters for getting all happy about friendlies, you know, and, and clearly look, friendlies, they're just nothing compared to the real deal. So we need to make sure that we keep this level of commitment and domination in games up because this is where it starts now. This is our last preseason friendly. Now this is where it gets important. So fingers crossed Arsenal can do the business and, uh, and yeah, that's it. Obviously, I'm a bit off my game now because of all of that rubbish that happened. But let me go deal with that. I'm going to see you after the Palace game. Arsenal looking absolutely brilliant. And it's exciting times, good times. It feels good to be an Arsenal fan before the first game of the season. And I can't even remember the last time that happened. So anyway, if you haven't already, please do like this video. Please subscribe and all of that stuff. And I'll see you next time. Right, um, because of all of that nonsense with the steward earlier, I, I didn't actually end up talking about the one thing I really don't want to talk about, but I feel like it's important. And I feel like as fans of Arsenal Football Club, we should talk about, and that's Thomas Partey and the way Arsenal are choosing to deal with everything um, surrounding him right now. And you know what? Like, I have to admit, throughout, throughout this whole game today, since this has gone public, and for those of you that don't know, I haven't spoken about this before because it's all been private. But now, actually, the accused has gone public on, on this so now it is in the public domain and i feel like it's probably not right for us to just ignore it as fans and pretend it's not happening thomas Partey has been accused of rape and and he's out there playing football like normal and i'm just not it just doesn't sit right with me personally that this is happening the question that i keep on asking myself is if this was, for example, a cleaner or a steward or a kit man, would they be treated in the same way? Would the club be saying to them, no, no, it's fine, just come into work as usual. Crack on with your job, it doesn't matter. And if that, if the club were doing that, then at least they're applying their policy, whether the policy is right or wrong, but at least they're applying the policy consistently. What is just bothering me though, is that actually are they applying the policy inconsistently and the beneficiary, as usual in society, is a rich, wealthy man. And I'm just not comfortable with that. Um, I can't help but feel like Arsenal should be dealing with this differently and just be taking Partey out of the limelight in a way until we just have a resolution to this. Because this is seriously important, what, what has been accused here. And way more important than any game, any season, any sport. Look, you know, uh, that's all I'm going to say about it. I, I definitely think that this is one thing that we shouldn't be slating Thomas Partey. We shouldn't be slating the, the, the poor person that um, has potentially been a victim of these crimes. Um, you should actually be sitting on the fence here. It's the safest place to be. It's the most sensible place to be. We don't know what's going on. We have to rely on the authorities to, to do something. But actually, do you know what? I'm, just, I'm desperate for clarity on this because until I get clarity, I can't look at Thomas Partey and just clap him like nothing's going on. There's a massive elephant in the room. And as I say, I'm really not sure that Arsenal were dealing with this in the right way. Anyway, I'll see you next time after Palace. And hopefully, um, yeah, listen, hopefully this horrible issue is resolved properly by then.